About a month ago, I released a video detailing the entire NVIDIA Turing product stack to date. I broke down each card from the GTX 1650 to the RTX 2080 Ti and discussed pure gaming results data as well as breaking down price versus performance using the lowest card in the stack as a baseline. I got several comments on that video saying that I should do the same thing for the current gen AMD products. And while that's certainly a valid idea and one that I had honestly already considered, there were several reasons why I specifically did not want to do it. But here we are, right? So something had to change my mind. Let's get to the goods right after the intro. If you've been searching for that final piece for your show build, look no further than Thermaltake's new water ram, DDR4. The low profile 3200 speed dims look great in any configuration, but the RGB magic really happens when you attach the included custom water block. Compatible with Thermaltake's extensive RGB ecosystem and Amazon Alexa, water ram is a true eye catcher that will make your system stand out from the crowd. So check out the link below to learn more. Just a real quick aside here, guys, if you enjoy these videos and appreciate the effort that it takes to make them, please consider subscribing and ringing that little notification bell down there. It helps a lot, I promise. I also have a store, so go check that out below. Thanks a lot. I'll be honest, the main reason why I didn't want to tackle another one of these videos so quickly after having finished the first one was that this is an enormously time-consuming endeavor. Testing multiple graphics cards across nine tests at three different resolutions. Just the benchmarking process itself takes days if I sat down and dedicated myself to it. The return on that kind of time investment for the NVIDIA video was honestly poor, with viewership numbers that didn't justify a second spin of the wheel. Additionally, the reason that I chose to do this kind of analysis with NVIDIA specifically is because all of their current products are derived from the new Turing architecture, and thus it was easy to create a logical break in the product stack. Even though AMD certainly also supports a wide range of pricing and graphical horsepower on the market currently, when you look at what they have on sale on Newegg, it's really a mixed bag. You have both 14 nanometer and 12 nanometer Polaris, as well as 14 nanometer and seven nanometer Vega. If we're incorporating Polaris, especially the original 14 nanometer node, how far back do we go? Is the RX 480 in play? Considering that I had done seven GPUs total for Nvidia, I sat down and tried to create a similar plan of attack for AMD. If I started at the top, the Radeon 7, and worked my way backwards, the seven latest GPUs would be the Radeon 7, the Vega 64, the Vega 56, the RX 590, the RX 580, RX 570, and RX 560. This seemed like a reasonable sample, spanning many market segments and enthusiast tiers. So I started my testing in earnest, but quickly again ran into issues. First of all, my original Vega 64 reference card just straight up stopped working. This is the original card that I've had since launch and for the vast majority of its life, it has just sat in a box on my product shelf in my office. I was running a few tests and then the screen just went black. I wasn't able to revive it and I haven't really had time to try to figure out what happened. So I had to source another Vega 64 for this test. Secondly, and definitely more importantly, I discovered that the RX 560 is not a SKU that can compete in this derby. With a meager two gigabytes of VRAM, and yes, I know that there are four gigabyte models, but this one is a two, and it's also woefully short on processing power, the tests that I had chosen were brutal on the 560, often returning results in the single digits for average frame rate. For Honor was running at four FPS in one scenario, according to my Fraps counter, but the benchmark spit out 31 FPS as a result, which was higher than the RX 570 and 580, so I could tell that even the benchmarking programs were having fits with this GPU that's not really meant for these type of tasks. So I did ultimately drop it as it would have too grossly skewed our final price to performance comparison chart. So with AMD announcing the new Navi card, the 5700 and the 5700 XT, and them hopefully arriving soon, maybe in Q3 of this year or so, I figured that yes, this was certainly going to be something that was worth it, even if we could only move forward with six cards. Now that we've gotten that stuff out of the way, let's talk about testing methodology and the actual data itself. 
First off, as with all of my gaming benchmarks, at least recently, these tests were run on my 9900K test bench overclocked to five gigahertz with 16 gigs of DDR4-3200. I again ran the same nine tests as the Nvidia stack faced, and you'll see results for 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, or 2160p. Each benchmark was run three times on average to help mitigate any frame rate outliers. Here is the raw data from those tests. I then performed several operations using this data, the same way as I did for the Nvidia stack. What I aimed to do was to create a way to be able to compare both price and performance against the same baseline. In this case, the baseline will be the cheapest and lowest performing card in the stack. It was gonna be the 560, but we made it the 570. In order to manipulate the data to show us this, I first averaged the frame rate results from all of the tests that return data in frames per second. So that's basically everything that you saw with the exception of Fire Strike, because that just gives you a score. These are the average frame rates across eight tests for 1080p, 1440p, and 4K for each of the GPUs that we looked at so far. I think the results look pretty much as you'd expect them to with the Radeon 7 on top and the RX 570 at the bottom, and each card in between showing a predictable fall off. I then took this average frame rate data and compared it to our baseline, the RX 570. To do that, the 570 is assigned a score of 100. And what you see on these charts shows how each GPU performs relative to that score of 100. As an example, if we had a GPU that performed twice as well as the 570, it would receive a score of 200 on this chart. I did this for all resolutions and then averaged the results to get our relative performance data. Next up, we need to talk about price though. As of the filming of this video, here is the pricing data in US dollars charted the same way as a percentage of the baseline's MSRP. Of course, sales happen and you could get these cards cheaper some of the time, but I had to try to standardize this information somehow. Again, you'll see the RX 570 is assigned a score of 100 here and each card is some percentage of the 570's cost. The Radeon 7, for instance, gets a score of 500 because it's exactly five times the cost of the RX 570 at retail. Now, we have both price and performance plotted against the same baseline and using the same scale. So we have finally arrived at the point where we can compare relative price versus relative performance. And this is what that chart looks like. Similar to Nvidia's, the performance line is fairly predictable here, meaning that if there was a mythical Vega 60 that slotted in between the 56 and the 64, we could probably tell you how it would game. However, the price line increases exponentially as we go higher and we have a large gap between price and performance when we get up to the top of the stack. Now, this isn't uncommon with Halo products and I don't fault AMD for their pricing schemes when it comes to something like a Radeon 7. However, you can see why certainly some people might balk at the value proposition as we get towards the top end here. The bottom end just looks so much better on a price to performance scale. 
So this gives us a great place to start when evaluating an upcoming product like AMD's Navi-based 5700 and 5700 XT. Will they fit into this existing mold or will they have a better performance ratio than their announced MSRPs would suggest? Hopefully we can revisit this data at a later time and use it to help compare. Additionally, I'd love to find a way to plot both AMD and Nvidia cards against the same baseline. However, I am unsure as to what that baseline would have to be in order to be fair to both parties. For Nvidia, I used the GTX 1650 for the same reason that I used the RX 570 here. It's the bottom of the stack. If you have any suggestions that would work as a reasonable baseline for both AMD and Nvidia, please let me know down below. As always guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Get subscribed if you're not already, and I will see you next time.